We're gonna start off with the standard A-stable multivibrator shell. Just a couple of resistors and transistors loosely strewn about. Now for the potentiometer, this is where things start to diverge already, whereas Steve used two resistors down here and put the potentiometer on top, I actually put the resistor up top and the potentiometer down here, and what I think is an issue with Steve's design is that it never goes down all the way to 0% duty cycle, nor all the way up to 100 it always sticks somewhere in between, so we're definitely gonna go with my version here and just put the potentiometer here. And now to the first transistor of the output stage. We're gonna go with Steve's placement of the transistor. So here we have the 100k resistor and then the first transistor here. Tied to ground with another resistor up here. Then we get to the second transistor and I'm going to put that like so. Another resistor and then finally the power transistor. Um, it's gonna be a lot bigger, just the way I draw things. And now our load, it'll be a motor like usual. The reverse voltage protection diode, I'm going to put it here. And now this just feeds into the base of the power transistor. Now one thing I'm going to add to make things better is that I noticed even with a 100k resistor here, the circuit is still a tiny little bit biased towards the left side. So the easiest way to change that is by simply drawing the same amount of current we draw out of the right side out of the left side as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and put another 100k resistor here. And to replace the junction of this transistor, we can simply go ahead and put a tiny little diode down here. Just use the lowest current diode you can find. Anything is going to work. It's just to get this 0.7 volt threshold voltage here as well. And the resistor is going to do the rest. So now to calculate these resistor values, first of all, let's just go with the values we already have. So in the original version, I used one kilo ohm resistors here. So Steve also used one kilo ohm. So we're just gonna stick with that. 1K seemed to be good. 1K. Then this is obviously 100K. Then we have a diode. So here I'm going to put a 1N4148. Just the lowest current diode you can find. Anything will work. It's just to get the 0.7 volts threshold voltage. This is going to be 100 nanofarad. Steve also used 100 nanofarad, so we're gonna stick with 100 nanofarad. The transistors, well, for the transistors you can use any standard small signal transistor. I generally use the BC457, but you can also use the 2N2222 and pretty much any other kind of standard NPN transistor. Now this transistor, I'm also going to go with a BC547, then we have 100K. Here, another BC547. And for the power transistor, I'm gonna go with the BD139, simply because that is the only power transistor I know off the top of my head. This three-wheeling diode is going to be a 1N4148 as well. You could also use the 1N4007 or anything in between. Pretty much most diodes are going to do the job. It's just to make sure there's no reverse voltage breaking down this transistor. And now these resistors are the only ones we actually need to calculate. So first of all, we need to know the current going into the base of this transistor. So we have 12 volt divided by 101K is 0.1 milliamps basically. So actually what I learned from Steve is to fully saturate a transistor, you basically need to put in five times the base current that you would theoretically need with the given 
current gain, so we're gonna go with this, what we got here, divided by 5, which is going to give us a fifth, and then if we multiply that by 200, which is the standard current gain for BC547, it's gonna be 4.7 milliamps is the current this transistor can reliably switch with this current flowing into its base. So we can simply calculate this resistor for a current of 4.7 milliamps. Let's go with 4 milliamps. So we have 12 volts divided by 0 0.004 amps is 3k. Um, the closest standard value I believe is 3.3k, so... No, there is a 3k resistor. It's not really that critical. I'm going to put 3k. Let's just put 3k. It's not that much of a standard value, but good enough. Then, now we have a current of 4.7 milliamps here. Now we can calculate what kind of current this transistor can switch. And that'll be obviously 4 milliamps. I should probably get this other number back. Okay, now here we have it, um, 0 0.004752475, good enough, divided by 5, now we get a fifth of that, equals some random value, and multiplied by 200, which is the gain of this other BC547 and that's 190 milliamps is what this transistor can switch theoretically can switch obviously a BC547 can only switch like 100 milliamps collector current but theoretically it's able to switch up to 190 milliamps so we simply divide 12 by 190 milliamps 12 volts divided by points 190 is 63 ohms for this resistor so we could just put a 75 ohm resistor here or we could just go higher 100 ohms maybe because this transistor has a current gain of 40 so if we take the 1 amp capability 1 amp divided by 40 is 25 milliamps to switch one amp via this transistor, so there is a lot of margin. Let's just put 100 ohm here. And this we're gonna up it to 4.7k. It's a much more common value. Use whatever you want. Now with this amount of current, now I have 12 volts divided by 100 ohms is 120 milliamps going into the base of the BD139 and times... Oh, what I forgot, we have our... Oh darn, completely messed it up. I forgot to divide that current by 5. Anyway, it's m more than enough. We have 120 milliamps divided by 5 equals 24 milliamps and that is more than enough. Not more than enough, but exactly enough to switch one amp. 24 milliamps Earlier I calculated it needs 25 milliamps to switch 1 amp, so this is capable of switching 1 amp, basically. Now, it is worth noting that if you need higher current capabilities, if you need 5 amps or 10 amps, then it's just not worth using transistors, because to switch like 5 amps of current, you're gonna pour a lot of current down the drain just to switch on this power transistor. And the more powerful transistors get, I believe, the lower the current gain is. So if you have a 5 amp transistor, it's gonna be horrendous. You're gonna be wasting a lot of current. Just go simple with a MOSFET if you need high switching currents. Just put one MOSFET here, right here. Replace this transistor with a MOSFET, connect it to ground, get all rid of all this and put your load down here instead of the transistor yeah instead of the resistor it's not worth messing around with transistors if you need high currents 
So there you have it. This is the final circuit. Now I am going to do several versions of this circuit. One for 5 volts. I'm going to do the one for the, the improved MOSFET version. I'm going to put links to all these down in the video description so you can simply download the circuit. Oh, and I totally forgot to mention the potentiometer as well as the resistor above the potentiometer. Now, for the potentiometer, I originally used a 100k potentiometer, um, but it also works with a 10k potentiometer and presumably everything in between, so we're just gonna put a 4.7 kilo ohm potentiometer here, a uh, 47 kilo ohm, I meant to say. 47k here and this resistor above is just there to limit the base current to the transistor in case the potentiometer is turned all the way to the left or all the way to the right. So I use 4k7, 4k7 is good enough. It's just to make sure there's not too much current rushing into one of the transistor's base. But technically that's also limited because I heard that if you have a transistor, as long as the collector current is limited, it won't use horrendous amounts of base current. Though I'm not quite sure. Anyway, that's it. The potentiometer is 47k, presumably anything between 10k and 100k should work. And this is just there. Now, with this configuration, it's gonna go all the way down to 0% duty cycle and all the way up to 100% duty cycle. So that's gonna be good. We have the reverse voltage protection diode. We have our other diode. And that's basically it. Bye.